Okay. Listen, guys. Um, of course, I'm still in Tokyo at the moment. Look. There's something you, some of you need to hear. The Most High has better for you. I've said it. The Most High has better for you. Yes, he does. He has better. Hold on. Oh. Speak on. Look. Many of you, you've lost relationships, marriages, friends, jobs, many job opportunities, people, people you were engaged with someone, someone else came by and then married an individual, or you liked a girl, some other dude's bloke took her, uh, or you are a woman, you want, you liked a guy and some, your best friends took him away from you, now she's married with him, or maybe there were people that spoke bad about you, maybe caused you to lose a job opportunity, or you were provoked in doing things you shouldn't have done, it doesn't matter, okay? I'm talking to believers now. Everything that's behind you is behind you because you don't need it. Okay? It's behind you because the most I has better for you. I'm going to give you the strangers now. Okay? And some of these may have, may have happened real. Some of these may apply to you. Some of you may recognize such circumstances. I'm just going to give you illustrations now. Okay? Listen. You had this guy. He was working at a at a company, he was just a regular co-worker. He didn't earn that much, but he was happy with his job. He could provide for his family. Then there was a vacancy for a chef. One chef went, um, retired and someone else could fill in the, the job application. And one of the, co one of the employees was to be promoted as a chef. And, you know, and let me say it was at the police, it was at the police station because not all cops are on the street. Some cops are doing other works. Okay. Now this police officer, he wanted to become the chef and he's a Christian. Okay. And yes, this police officer, you know, he just, they didn't knew any better. Okay. He just thought, okay, if I become a chef. I can me I can have a better influence upon the police corps. I can weed out corrupt and evil police officers. I could serve the community better. First of all, the Most High never wanted him to become a police officer at all. That was his own thought. That and that was, he was influenced by his environment. And he thought, okay, I can make a difference as a police officer. So he he became a police officer. God didn't want that. However, he became born again, and now he can become a chef. And he wants to apply for it, but the Holy Spirit tells him, don't do it, Jeffrey. Jeffrey says, Father, Lord, I want this. I can become a good influence to, on the police corps. I can beat out the evil police officers. I can fire them. I, the Moses said, Jeffrey, don't do it. And it just kept on and on and on. Then the Moses told him, okay, Jeffrey, you want to become a chef? You want to become, you want to be blamed for all the bad stuff those psychopathic police officers are doing? Do you want to be held accountable for them murdering people? Because that's going to happen if you're the chef. You have a position, but you're going to be blamed for everything that goes wrong, even if it's not your fault. Do you really want that? Jeffrey thinks, oh, no, 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 Lord, I don't want that. Then those spread continues. And Jeffrey... You when you, you were just a regular cop now, so now most of those uh, mafia members and those hard criminals, they're not coming after you, you're just a regular police officer. When you become a chef, you you become targeted. Your children will be targeted. You want that to happen? Jeffrey thinks, no, 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 Lord, I don't want this. And Jeffrey decides, okay, I'm not going to apply for the promotion to become a chef. <laughs> you see? The Most High knows better, you see. Sometimes we think that we know what's going to be well for us, but the most, God sees everything. Or for example, you have this, you have this, this young guy, 
and he sees and he knows this beautiful girl. She has nice boobs, nice ass, and long legs. You get what I'm saying here, guys. And he wants to get involved with this woman. But every time he makes a move on her, something happens, something comes between. So he begins to pray about it. And the Holy Spirit tells him, David, let that girl go. David, let her go. And David's thinking, Lord, she's a believer. At least she says she's a believer. Lord, uh, I have a chance with her. I mean, Lord, I'm not going to treat her badly, Lord. Lord, the Holy Spirit doesn't believe it. Let her go. Eventually, David hears that she's, she shares a boyfriend and uh, she breaks all contact with David and David is sad. Then David, after a few weeks, David moves on with his life. Six years later, David is at a wedding and um, one of his old classmates brings him some news. This classmate says, David, do you remember that girl you were so crazy about that didn't like you, by the way? Yeah, I remember her. What's wrong? Well, she has been charged with child abuse, with sexual abuse of children, and she has been um, she has been provoking her husband to abuse other children also. She may spend ten or fifteen years in jail for what she's done, and her children are now being transported to foster families. David, I knew you were crazy about that girl. I didn't want to tell you at the time, but that girl was not right at the right mind. You see, it's it's the it's the you know you're very blessed, David, that you missed her. Okay. And David was thinking, oh, now I understand why the Holy Spirit told me, let her go. You see, David was not aware of the reprobate and the evil witch and psychopath she really was. David was only focused upon his desire to bang her. I won't excuse my language, I'm just being real here. That's the only thing David was thinking about. Of course. David also realized it's a relationship. I would have to marry her, for, uh, work to pay for house for her to live. David was willing to do all of that because David could only imagine the positive things that could happen. Now David was not insane. David realized that she had her her strange attitude, but David, you know, didn't bother with that. He was thinking, well, once I'm with her, things are going to get well. The Most High protect David from being sexually emotionally, mentally, and financially abused by a woman, okay? And, you know, these circumstances do happen. Now, there's another thing. You have this guy, or let's say you have this woman, she wants to marry a guy. She's so crazy about the guy, and, um, you know, she's praying and the Lord tells her, why do you want that man? Well, he's nice, he's cute, he has good manners, blah, blah, blah. She lists a whole list of good things she endorses about the man. Um, then the Lord, the Holy Spirit, tells to her, okay, these are all the things you want of this man. Why? She thinks, well, why? Well, she can't answer it. Then the Holy Spirit tells her, so hold on a minute. You endorse so many good qualities of this man, right? But you cannot explain why. But you do pray for me to endorse something that even you cannot explain why you're doing it. Hello, what's going on with you? 
then she begins to think, hold on a minute, why am I doing this? Then after a few weeks, she encounters the same guy and she totally dislikes him, can't even stand him. So the spirit comes to her. Um, Jennifer, do you remember that guy you were so fond of, you were praying about? Jennifer said, uh, yes, I brought that man to you two days back. But I noticed that you pushed him away. Why? Jennifer then lists a whole list of things she can stand up about the guy. Then the Holy Spirit tells her, but hold on a minute, those were the same things you endorsed about him before. And now you're totally against him. What if I would have grow, uh, answered your prayer and given you that man? You would have ruined his life, your life, and the lives of, the future, of his future wife and future family. And Jennifer acknowledged, praise, praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know what's best. You see, often you are not wrong. The things you want or long for, they're natural, they're healthy, they're fine, okay? But you do not see everything. For example, of David, David's idea of wanting to have a wife is fine, okay? He was willing to take care of her and take the full responsibility. That's great. However, the woman he was thinking to fill that place was, it was, he, 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 that woman was not fit for it at all. They couldn't realize it. Now there's another thing. Did a guy is homeless, uh, is uh, not homeless, he's jobless, he's unemployed, he lost his job. And he's mourning about the fact he's lost his job. He was, he was still thinking, why didn't I work harder? Why did I do that, do this, do that? And um, one day, his wife tells him, Darling, you need to stop doing this. That job was not right for you. You came home stressed every afternoon. People at the job were gossiping about you. They were treating you as trash. They were exploiting you. That place was not good for you. Yes, you didn't do your job well. However, you cannot do your job well in a hostile environment where people are de degrading you and treating you as trash. Strange. They were complaining about your job results, but they, but they never could see their own contribution to it. Darling, you've lost that job. It's the best thing that could, happen, could have happened. Praise the Lord. Okay, I'm in around 30 minutes now in this video. Guys. I hope you understand clearly when I'm making it clear here. Many of you are still sad about how things happened in the past. Some things should have gone better. Or now listen, everything that's behind you, let it stay behind you. Okay, I'm sorry for making my noise, my my voice go so high, but I'm going to do it again. Leave it behind you. Leave it. Leave it behind you. Okay. I don't care if you're a woman and you're still mourning about your ex-husband or ex-boyfriend. I don't care how good he looked, I don't care how handsome he was or how good he could have sex with you. If he's behind you, let him remain behind you. And dude, I don't care how sweet, how good looking that woman was or how good the sex was, she's behind you, leave her behind you. I don't care how much money you could have made with that job, leave it behind you. This, listen, when in the creation, you can read in Genesis 1. When it was dark in creation, God said, let there be light. God commanded, he spoke out his faith, and light came. He didn't keep mourning about it, it was dark. Now listen, he began to speak God's promises of your life. Declare, decree, commands the promises of God upon your life. And in agreement with that, decree, demand, declare, in the spirit, positive things in your life. You see, you want to have a big house, decree and declare it. Because and based on the promise of God for your life, that God will provide for you. You want to get, you want to get, have a hot girl to marry, decree the declare it. You want to have a, a, a handsome husband, decree the declare it. And listen, if there is any darkness still in you that needs to be taken care of, while you're walking with God, God will, the Holy Spirit will baptize you with fire, and, and the Holy Spirit, the fire of the Holy Spirit will burn away all the impurities out of you. So all the troubles, 
the trials and tribulations and persecutions you go through, the Most High is using it to purify you. So even if you have desires that don't make sense, don't be ashamed of it. If it's being exposed, praise the Lord. The Lord is purifying you. So maybe you want to have a big house, but you want it for the wrong reasons. Now the Lord has purified you. Now you don't want a big house anymore. Now you just want to have, now you want to have a foster home to take, to be a blessing to other people. You see, you're defending. Maybe you wanted to marry that handsome guy, but only for the wrong reasons. Now you don't care about handsome anymore. You just want the guy that loves the Lord and wants to be with, with you. With you. you understand? So you're developing. So don't be ashamed, okay? There's nothing to be ashamed about when you're following Christ. Absolutely nothing, okay? Man, I have a lot of desires, a lot of things I want. You see? Am I claiming that, that there's no sin in that I have no sin? Am I claiming that there's no piece of darkness still attached to me or inside of me? I'm not claiming that. Jesus said, if you walk with me, you don't walk in darkness. Does this mean that you have no darkness left in you? Because remember, you, you came out of the world. You were damaged by the world, okay? You have, to, you have to unlearn things from the world. When you walk with God, from time to time, you will be infected by the world. God knows that. However, so you are acknowledging reality. Yes, you are being infected. Yes, you may have, you may have certain areas in your life that are still dark. However, don't be ashamed of it. Don't feel guilty about it. Keep on walking with the Most High, okay? Keep are walking with him keep agreeing with him okay guys more things i'm going to share this youtube channel about my life okay no no see, it's not my life it's god's life working out through me god wants you to have desires god wants you to have ambitions but he wants you to to submit them all to his confidence towards you let all your desires and wants be sub be Sub subjected to the blood covenant of Jesus Christ, okay? If a desire or something you want does not add up with the blood covenant of Christ, the Lord will purify you from it. Then once the Lord purifies you from it, leave it behind. You see? I'm telling it you all, leave that crap behind. It's far, there are far better things for you. And I'm not boasting here. I'm just agreeing with God said about me. If God calls you a king, don't label yourself a slave. If God calls you great, don't call yourself average. If God calls you blessed, don't call, don't name yourself lucky. I agree with what the Mosai says about you. People will call you arrogant. People will call you haughty. That you think you're everything. Their problem. Seriously, their problem. They're the ones agreeing with curses. So they're the ones having to deal with those curses. They're the ones choosing to persecute you. So. They've rejected the Most High and what the Most High wants to offer them, or what the Most High wants them to, to have, their problem. You keep following the Most High. Me? You guys will see me soon in my palace. You will see me soon um, with a lot of blessings. You're right, I'm already blessed, you see. I'm already blessed, okay? Uh, so I will always remain blessed. Blessing? Does, has nothing to do with property and belongings, okay? But don't get me, don't, don't get it twisted. Belongings are a part of the covenant. God wants you to be wealthy, not only spiritually and in, in your soul, but also in the material to glorify Him, okay? God does not want you to have wealth to lock yourself up off from the world. God wants you to have wealth to be a blessing to others. So there's, there's nothing wrong with calling yourself blessed if you have, if you have material belongings, as long as those material belongings serve the purpose of Christ for your life. Okay? And if you are in a position that you don't have many belongings, praise the Lord anyway. You see, true prosperity, true peace, and true victory is walking with Jesus Christ. Okay? But well, that being said, you all, Shalom.